Good morning, everyone. Welcome back to another Thursday morning bite sized viol. My name is Kayla Wagaman. I am the producer and observatory coordinator here at the Viol Planetarium. Now, today we've got a very special night sky tour planned. We are actually using a different version than I normally use of the Stellarium software. This is the one that you may use at home if you just type in Stellarium onto Google. This is the Stellarium web version. We can see that they also have a mobile version that you can download on your phone to be able to use out in the field or to just look at some amazing things. Now on the side here, we do have this fun little panel. I love this little guy here. This is called Planets Tonight. If we open up this box, it tells you exactly when you could spot planets in the sky using just your eyes. It also includes when the sun will be up, so when you won't be able to see any stars, when you'll be able to see the moon. As we're going along here, you may notice a few things are different. To be able to change your location, we're gonna click down in this corner right here, and you can type in a location yourself, or you can just use the GPS on your computer. And the time I have set is for tonight at nine o'clock. This is after the sun has set below the horizon. Now you notice there's a little bit of fog here. This is our atmosphere setting. So if you are somewhere a little bit outside of the city, there's still a little bit of light nearby. This is a sky very similar to what you would see. We call this light pollution. The light from our cities and our townhouses shines up into the atmosphere. It bounces off of dust particles and water vapor and creates that glow that we see that can sometimes block our stars. To get a much clearer view, you'll want to drive further out into the country where there are no lights, only trees nearby. Now to simulate that in our software here, you can click this third button down here. It looks like a little mountain with a sun this is our atmosphere button. This is gonna remove all of those particles that the light is bouncing off of to give you a true dark sky view. Now we are looking towards the north. This is where I like to start stargazing. There are seven very bright, very easy to spot stars. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. These seven stars make up a shape that we call the Big Dipper or the Big Spoon in our sky. The Big Dipper is an excellent starting point because it's very bright and easy for us to see. Now the Big Dipper is what we call an asterism or a star picture that anyone can make up. All you need to do is connect a few dots and give it a name. Asterisms will be unique depending on where you are around the world. Here in the United States, we all agree the Big Dipper looks like a spoon. But if you travel to different parts of the world, in England, they thought it looked like a wagon or a plow. In China, they thought it looked like the emperor's cart. It became very hard for early astronomers to share information. So the International Astronomical Union made a map of our sky, creating 88 official constellations that would be recognized by astronomers worldwide. Using our little search button up here, we can type in Ursa Major, and then it'll bring up the artwork and the stick figure for this constellation. And you'll also see this little bounded region. Whenever we're talking in terms of constellations, we mean a puzzle piece of the sky. So everything that astronomers find in the sky in this region, any faraway galaxies or nebula, we would call Ursa Major, followed by a series of numbers, letters, maybe another name like Ursa Major Galaxy, and this little search feature is very, very handy. So anytime you want to find something, you can just type it into this search bar here. 
And another way to bring up our constellations is using this constellation button down here. Now we can view all of those constellations in our sky. We also have another button called constellation artwork, which will manually bring up that artwork for every one of the constellations you see. Now continuing our tour through the sky, there's one more figure that I'd like to find in the northern part of the sky. I'd like to find one of the most important stars in our sky. To find it, we're going to use the outer two stars, Mirac and Dubby. Mirac and Dubby make up the outer part of the bowl of the Big Dipper. And as we click on a star here, you'll see a little window has popped up. This tells us the name of the star, also a little bit of information about it, such as its magnitude, how far away from us it is. So this is 122 light years away from us. You can also see if it's visible tonight, which is really cool. And we can learn a little bit more about Ursa Major. Now connecting the line between Mira and Dubby, we can continue it out into space to this little star here. About five times the width of those two stars and you'll land at Polaris. You may know Polaris better as the North Star or our guide star. Now Polaris is not the brightest star in our sky. If we're listing them out, it's about number 42 on that list, but it is very handy when you're trying to find your way around. If we're looking towards the North Star, we are facing due North. And Polaris can actually tell us what's called our latitude or our distance above the equator when we're looking at the globe. To find your latitude when you're out in the field, you'll take one hand, your favorite hand, and point up at Polaris. Then take your other hand and point straight out in front of you towards the horizon, and you'll make an angle. If you measure that angle, that will give you your latitude. Here in Pittsburgh, we are at about 40 degrees latitude, or 40 degrees above the equator. Now Polaris picks up the handle of what we call the Little Dipper, or the official constellation we find here is Ursa Minor. The Little Bear. Now, as we typed in Ursa Minor over here, We've got these little buttons that have popped up. If you want to share this view with someone else, you can click this link right here. It will give you a little link that you can share with anyone. And whenever they click on it, it will bring up Stellarium and highlight that constellation for you. So if you find something really cool you want to share with someone else, you can use this link here. We've also got these buttons so that we can zoom in and really get a good look at Ursa Minor and zoom back out. Putting the little X on that box will bring down Ursa Minor from our view. Now our northern part of the sky stays the same pretty much throughout the year here in Pittsburgh. The only thing that changes is some of these stars' locations. All of the stars will seem to circle around Polaris. We call these circumpolar constellations. To get a better view of some of our seasonal constellations, we're going to be spinning our view around here. Now, how we do that is by using our mouse. We're going to left click and just drag around until we're facing the southern part of the sky. This is where all of the action happens throughout the year. This part of the sky is constantly changing. Now, we are fastly approaching late spring and getting ready for summer. And there's one constellation, who I would argue is the most famous constellation, who's getting ready to leave our evening sky. Looking towards the Southwest, he's very easy to spot. You just need to find the one, two, three stars that form his belt. This is of course, Orion. The hunter. 
Orion is home to two very bright and beautiful examples of stars. Located in his shoulder is this red star, Betelgeuse. You don't want to say that three times. And located in his knee is a blue star named Rigel. But Orion is also home to something else that's very special. It's home to what we call a deep sky object, an object outside of our solar system you can see using just your eyes. Now to find this out in the field, you're going to look just below the middle star in Orion's belt you'll see a very fuzzy light. One really quick way to see it here is by clicking this deep sky objects button. This will circle all of the deep sky objects that you can find using just your eyes. So we can see this little circle here. And we're just going to zoom in to the Orion Nebula. Now, nebula are huge collections of gas and dust in space, and they can be trillions of miles across. The Orion Nebula is a stellar nursery. This is an area where little baby stars are being born. So how are stars born? Well, it all starts with gas and dust floating around in space. That gas and dust will get pulled together by gravity, growing more massive and hotter and so eventually that little star is born. Now we're going to zoom back out. If we keep hitting our zoom out button, we'll go back to our normal view here so that we can find a few constellations coming up this spring and into summer. Spinning our view around, we're going to look towards the southeast. And high overhead, you'll see what looks like a backwards question mark that ends in a star named Regulus. Now Regulus roughly translates to the heart of the king. And who can we think of that's the king of the jungle? The lion. This is Leo the lion. One of our very popular springtime constellations. And looking very close to the horizon throughout the year, throughout the night, we'll be able to spot Andromeda. She's very close. She's a little closer to the north right now. Andromeda is one of my favorite constellations to look at in our sky here. And we can see there's another deep sky object here. That is the Andromeda galaxy. Okay. Zoom on in to the Andromeda galaxy. This is the nearest major spiral galaxy to our galaxy, the Milky Way. She's actually bigger than we are. She's two and a half million light years across and home to an estimated trillion stars. Here in the Milky Way, we have a mere 400 billion stars. We're gonna zoom back out now into our field view. And this has just been a little tour of our night sky. Some of the constellations we're saying goodbye to some of the constellations we'll see all year, and some of those seasonal constellations that are just about to rise in our sky. I hope you all enjoyed this tour. I hope I educated you a little bit more on how to use the Stellarium software so that you can use it at home and find some really amazing objects. I hope you all have a wonderful rest of your Thursday, and I'll see you all again next week.